By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have some very interesting old school magic for you. And for me, this is really a trip down to memory lane because we're going to play starter deck versus starter deck. And you, maybe you're thinking, what is a starter deck? Well, I think most listeners are from the same magic time period as I am. But I'm, I'm still going to explain, though, because I just love to talk about it. Back in the day when I was a little Timmy, and this is in, in 95 when I started playing Magic, my first Magic product was a Magic the Gathering revised starter deck. So I bought a starter deck. In that starter deck were 60 cards, right? And that was basically your deck. That was your first deck. You would shuffle it up, play against other players, see how it did, see what cards you liked, see what cards you didn't like. And usually you would pick a couple of colors and then try to like trade towards those colors. It was even hard to get basic lands. So um, what we're doing today, which is really cool, my opponent, Plague Doctor, he started a project where he's trying to recreate these starter decks. So he's, he's, he's looking through the internet, he's asking friends to remember what they had in their starter decks, and he's making these starter decks again anew with a beautiful real revised deck box, a real revised uh, rules booklet, and also the cards or like near mint or well x let's say x let's call them excellent condition they're really really sweet they even have that kind of smell you know when i opened my pack which was a mail day video by the way so if you click on the link that's appearing right now you can check that out uh it really gave me that feeling again of oh man opening my first starter deck so um super super cool so i've got a starter deck plague doctor has a starter deck and we're gonna play against each other so i'm not quite sure what's gonna happen um, I'm playing, of course, with my Chandelier playmat because this is really some Chandelier, Chandelier uh, nonsense, right? So I have to do that. And what I can remember, actually, is that these, these games were pretty interesting back in the day, you know, because basically you were playing Singleton. Uh, you had to have luck with the mana. The games were slow, obviously, but they actually were a lot of fun. You had really weird game situations that you don't have in a constructed format. So I think this is going to be a really cool episode. Um, after you've watched it, let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'll give you my opinion as well. Maybe I don't like it at all, but I think I will actually, because this is really going back to the roots of my magic past. So I'm really looking forward to this match. Uh, before I start though, as always, I'm going to start with the deck decks, which are going to be super brief, basically a picture of both of the starter decks and what's in them. So you have an idea what we're playing with, but that's about it. But if you want to skip that section, just want to be completely surprised, which could be fun as well. You can skip the deck decks by checking out the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. Just click on there. It'll take you straight to the action. And as for now, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent here, Plague Doctor. Let's have a look. And here we see the starter deck of Plague Doctor. So, I mean, it's a little bit blurry, but I mean, we can figure this out. Um, I'm seeing a few cards that kind of scare me. Singer Vampire, Air Elemental, and Obsanius Golem, they're all uncommons and they're all incredibly strong. Remember, in this format, if you play a 4-4 flyer, I mean you don't have you don't have four swords in your deck, right? You're lucky if you have one sword in your deck. It's really tough to get rid of these creatures. Flying is a great evasion. And then talk about the Obsanius Golem. It is a 4-6 artifact creature. That's gonna be really rough. Look at the rest of the deck. I mean, Kelden Warlord could be quite good. Although, of course, you do need enough creatures. And the thing is, though, with the Air Elemental and the Sengi Vampire and the Warlord, that's something I've got to talk about. Mana base. Remem remember, these decks have horrible mana bases, right? It's all jumbled up here, but we can see that he only has one, two, two swamps, I think. Three swamps. He's got three swamps. He does have a dark ritual, but it's going to be really tough for him to find the mana to actually cast, for example, the Sengir Vampire or the Fear, just because they have double black in their casting cost. And then, you know, the Air Elemental is kind of the same story because he only has three islands. So maybe I'm lucky and he has them in hand, can't play them out. Um, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we do see some other powerful cards, though. We see Fireball, Disintegrate, they're great, because usually these games tend to take quite long. I also think that just all the creatures are good. You know, you, if you have a body, it's good. Also, cards like Fire Breathing could be quite good in this format. Uh, you know, because an enchant creature, it kind of sticks to the creature. It's much harder in this format to kill a creature. Drudge Skeletons, because of that regeneration clause, is quite good. Um, and talking about the rares in the pack, I do see a rare that 
is really really cool here we see a taiga so a dual land in this pack so that is that is pretty sweet uh that's of course the uh the green and the red dual land unfortunately for plague doctor we don't see a curde but um yeah this deck it's looking pretty solid I'm, I'm a little bit scared i see some really big creatures in here and i see the direct damage and yeah it's kind of scary now let's take a look at my 60. And here we see my deck. So I actually kept the cards in order the way they were in the booster. That's how I kind of laid them out. And after this, obviously, I shuffled them up and we started to play. Uh, but there on the left top corner, you can see my rare. So I've got Pirate Ship, Personal Incarnation, and El Hajash. El Hajash, do I pronounce that correct? Anyway, um, yeah, the, the cards are good. I think especially the Pirate Ship is a really good rare because it's only one blue and four, so that makes it kind of easier to cast. Remember, our mana bases are horrendous, right? I mean, how many islands do I actually have? I've got, I've got two islands, no, three islands. Okay, I've got three islands, right? But remember, my opponent is in exactly the same spot, right? So we're both kind of trying to find the right mana. Um, talking about mana, this makes it really difficult for me to cast this next card, Personal Incarnation. Personal Incarnation is a bomb in this format, right? Six mana for a six, six? Right, and whenever it takes damage, I can actually redirect that damage to myself so I can keep it alive. The only problem is when it dies, I lose half of my life total, but that's gonna be super difficult to do, right? You, you need like a terror to kill it and then I lose half my life. But if he doesn't have that, you know, I'm fine, I'm solid. So it's a six, six. The problem here is the casting cost, three white to cast, right? And of course, I think three more, but three white and three. The problem here is the three white. I mean, look at my mana base. I've got one, two, I've got four planes, which is actually quite a lot. It's more than the other lands, I think, but still only four planes. So if I want to cast the personal incarnation, I need 75% of all my planes on the battlefield. I Chances are quite slim that that's going to happen. So, I mean, I'm hoping that I can cast the personal incarnation, but I wonder. Now let's talk about the last rare here of the three, that's El Hajash. So El Hajash is two black and one. It's a one one and for each damage it uh, it inflicts, you gain a life. So it's kind of the first card with kind of this life link mechanic. Um, so it's a one one, it's two black and one. I think looking at the black mana, I've got one, two, three black mana. Not a lot, but I can cast it. I think when I'm looking at the rest of the booster, I'm seeing some pretty good cards. I don't have a lot of flyers, I notice. But that's okay. I do have like a big body in the form of Earth Elemental. I've got a Fireball. Um, I like the Dwarven Warriors. I think Dwarven Warriors in combination with Fire Breathing could be quite good, right? I can play, for example, a Fire Breathing on my Giant Spider or on my Drudge Skeleton that make it unblockable with the Dwarven Warrior and I can inflict some damage. I think Jump is a really nice uh, trick, combat trick in defending when I'm on the defending side. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I, have, I have a Lightning Bolt. I have a Terror. I have a Paralyze. So I've got quite a lot of answers to threats i've got a clone to kind of copy their biggest creature so that would be quite nice i've got an unstable mutation i mean this is a pretty decent pack um i mean if if, if i compare the two the first thing i notice is that you know plague doctor has the flyers but then again i've got some pretty big creatures as well and i've got some creature removal so i'm not unhappy with this uh starter deck and I think this is really a 50-50 fair fight, you know, between me and Plague Doctor. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know what? Let's go to the match and then find out who's going to win this crazy, goofy starter deck challenge. Let's go. Game number one, Plague Doctor here on the play. Funny side note here. I actually won the die roll, but I chose to go second thinking that card draw could be better in this format. You know, think about it. How are you going to draw cards? You can't. Just one card a turn. That's all. So I figured that maybe that one card can be uh, pretty big. Here we see, by the way, Plague Doctor not uh, playing a land. I'm playing my second land passing the turn. There's a second island here for Plague Doctor, so he missed one land drop. Both of us not able to play out anything yet. Yeah, I'm curious. It looks like I cannot play out a land as well, so I have to discard. Look at that discarding personal incarnation. Oh, no. I understand why I do it, because what's the chance of actually casting it with three white in the casting cost? But still, it feels bad. Let's see what Plague Doctor can do. Finding a forest from the top, it seems. So he's got three lands. Will he be able to cast something? That is a big question. Yes, yeah, so far the game is actually going kind of as I thought it would. Kind of both players kind of trying to find the right lands to actually start casting something. And both of us seem pretty unfortunate with that. Thus far, Plague Doctor just passing the turn. 
Look at this, tapping two swamps. What am I going to do? There's a Drudge Skeleton, which is actually quite good. It's a 1-1, one, one, and for one block, you can regenerate it. So, I mean, that's just really, really good. And I'm putting my lands in front here because that's just the way we used to play, you know? Back in 95, when I opened my first starter deck, this is what we were told to play by. You know, put the lands in front because the creatures have to walk over the lands. Look at that Plague Doctor now also discarding a card, discarding a reconstruction. A blue card, a sorcery. For one blue, you can uh, bring an artifact back from your graveyard. There's an Iron Star, I believe, so it's an uncommon. And every time uh, anybody casts a red spell, I can pay one, gain a life. So this could be useful. We're both playing with red stuff, so... Plague Doctor now finding a white. There's a Pegasus. So this is a 1-1 one, one flyer with banding. Art, I believe, by Melissa Benson, who also did the Shivan Dragon and the Lord of Atlantis. There's an attack for one. Plague Doctor dropping to 18, it seems. Yeah, of course, because it's my second attack here. Finding a Plains. Yeah, my camera, by the way, the setting here was quite bright. So I changed that after uh, game one. So sorry for that. It's kind of hard to see the uh, the lands now with this setting. Anyway, passing the turn to Plague Doctor, who's got a beautiful play mat, by the way, made by uh, Ken Myers Jr. There's the attack, drawing the ape on there himself. Passing the turn there, untap with the drudge. There's the attack. And Plague Doctor falling further behind. I'm on 19 now, by the way. I believe Plague Doctor is on 17. And I've got a COP red. I played that in the meanwhile. And Plague Doctor played a Circle of Protection white. There are more lands now. So we're really kind of finding our lands. I'm a little bit jealous of Plague Doctor because he's got islands and forests and plains. And I've only had swamps and plains. So uh, I'm just hoping to... To find some other lands. I'm sure my hand's probably full of like red, green, and, and blue spells. Anyway, attacking here again. I mean, I can't complain. I'm kind of winning this, this game thus far. Plague Doctor dropping to 16. And now um, he still has to untap that Pegasus, by the way. I think he kind of forgets exactly untaps attack. So I'm going to drop to 17. Drawing a card for turn. Oh, there's an island. So maybe now I can play some blue stuff. What can I do with an island? What are we going to see? Nothing, it seems. Nothing? I'm sure I'm going to attack at least. That would make sense, right? To at least have an attack in. Exactly. First attack, second main, I can play my stuff. So, Plague Doctor dropping to 15. Look at that. It looks like I'm going to tap a lot. Tapping 5 here. What am I going to cast for 5? Oh, this is really good. A pirate ship. This is really, really good. I can kill the Pegasus. I can start it to king with it this is not cool man he's got one counter spell in the deck one counter spell <sighs> the life i lead i mean you know me i love pirate ship i play pirate ship in timmy's spellbook the problem with the ship is though it, it, it or, or it gets countered like this when it's finally useful or it gets killed in another way it's it's tough to play with the ship but it's super cool so i'm going to keep doing it but it is tough, I can tell you that. This is just another, like, scar on my pirate ship memory. Plague Doctor now taking his turn and attacking again. I'm on 16. I mean, I'm one life ahead, right? That's something. Passing the turn here. Okay, let's go to the untap. What can I do? I've got five mana. That's pretty good. I've got three colors. I mean, I can't complain about that. It's funny how we both have circle of protections on the board that are not helping us at all. Like, he's got the white one. What are you going to do with the white one? I think I still got some white creatures in the deck. Benelli Shiro, I believe. So he can protect himself from the Benelli Shiro. That's something. I think the red one is, is a lot more useful. There's the attack. So putting Plague Doctor on 14. And we were having a lot of banter, by the way, in, in during this game. So don't be surprised if you see some, some mistakes. Passing the turn. So Plague Doctor untapping. 
pointing at my iron star. No idea why, because there's, there's nothing red at all. We don't even have mountains. We cannot cast anything red. That star is useless. That COP red is useless thus far. Tapping two blue. Creature bond. Oh, creature bond is so funny. So creature bond is a card you probably don't know or can't remember because nobody plays it. One blue and one. You enchant target creature with it, preferably your opponent's creature. When the creature dies, the uh, controller takes damage equal to its power, I believe. So one of the things people used to do was put a creature bond on like the biggest, meanest creature of your opponent and then play a terror and you would end kill the creature and deal some damage to your opponent. Um, you know, now we call that a two for one and that's a bad deal. But back in the day, that was considered useful. There's the attack. And I found a mountain, by the way. Let's see if I can do something with the mountain. That'd be pretty sweet. Tapping three, four. Okay, no three. Okay, Dwarven Warriors. That's actually quite nice. Like, if, if Plague Doctor keeps attacking, fine, I'll attack with the Dwarven Warriors. But if not, I can use it to make a creature unblockable or maybe offer a trade. Anyway, making a life here as well with the Iron Star going up to 16. So I'm making it kind of difficult now for Plague Doctor. Like, this is, this is what I like about these, like, sealed starter deck kind of format, I guess. You know, that's what we're doing is that all of a sudden, having access to a mountain can make a huge difference. Having one Dwarven Warriors can kind of tip the advantage to the other side. And I mean, the same thing goes to Plague Doctor. Like, I've, I've got a slight advantage here, but Plague Doctor, if he finds the right land or the right card, he can be right back into it. Going through his hand, I'm sure. Maybe he needs black, you know? Maybe he's got a Sengir Vampire in hand. Who knows? Attacking here with the 1-1 banners. I'm going to drop to 15. But now, of course, next turn I can attack him for 2. Or is he going to play something out? Look at this. Looks like he's going to do something. Stream of Life for 4. Okay, that's actually pretty decent. He'll go back up to 17. Ooh, look at that power sink from my side of the board. I, I get it. We're kind of having a race, so I don't want him to go four life up. Remember, we only have one ones to attack with thus far, so it's going to take a long time. So four life can kind of matter. And he's completely tapped out now, so I can attack him for two, put him on 11. Oh, unholy strength. This is really good. Now I've got a 3-2 regenerator. Wow. Now I'm dealing four damage. He's going to drop to nine. That is huge. Plague Doctor dropping to nine here. He's in trouble. He needs the COP black to get out of trouble. He needs something. He needs to find that air elemental. I hope he doesn't, by the way. But if he wants to live, he needs to find it. Air elemental would be disastrous on this board. I mean, look at it. He would fly over my forces, deal four turn. Could also attack, of course, keep attacking with the Pegasus. Would be five a turn. It would be on a three turn clock. That would be disastrous. Then again, Plague Doctor is on nine. I've got four power on the board, so he's got to think about that as well. First things first for him, though. Can he find anything to play out? I mean, if the board stays the way it does, he's going to take more damage next turn. And then I wonder if I'm going to offer him the trade for the Dwarven Warriors. So passing the turn here, going to untap. So this is good for me. He's not doing anything. This is great. I'm not really afraid for any instances, especially since he doesn't have red mana open. Finding another planes, by the way. Two planes now. Attacking, not offering to trade. Wanting to keep the warrior, though. Look at this. He's blocking using a healing solve to kind of prevent the damage. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. So he's not going to take any damage and he's going to keep the Pegasus. That's really, really good for him. And he's finding a swamp now. So maybe that was the land he needed. I'm now trying to remember what black cards he had in his deck, but I, I can't really remember. Uh, there's another mountain. I, actually, I don't... I cannot complain about my mana this turn. Look at the lands, you know. Or just this game, I mean. Ooh, he's going to do something else. What is he going to do? Guardian Angel! This Pegasus is indestructible, man. Like, first the healing soft, now the Guardian Angel. Plague Doctor's got a lot of tricks. And, and for me, it means I cannot deal any damage. This is the second turn out that I haven't dealt a single point of damage to him, which is really good for him, right? Because he can try to find an answer from the top of his deck. 
in a format like this, one extra turn can make all the difference. Oh, this is ugly though. Plague Doctor has to discard one of his best cards in the deck, Keldon Warlord. You know, which is uh, two red and two for an Asterix Asterix creature because his power and toughness depend on the amount of creatures that he has on his side of the board. So if it would play it now, it would have been a 2-2, but he doesn't have any mountains. Look at this, going for kind of an alpha strike here. Dwarven Warriors in there as well, offering to trade to Plague Doctor. Looks like he's going to chump instead. Just take one damage, go to eight. That's kind of, that's kind of understandable. Oh, I'm counting. Do I have a fireball? Do I have a fight? Really? Am I going to end it with a fireball? I'm going to end it with a fireball. I'm a little bit... You know, I don't want these games to end with a fireball, but... Do I have a counterspell? No, we don't. No, I thought, does he have two counterspells in there? Of course he doesn't. Look at his hand, though. Saying your vampire was in there. I called it. And a lot of red. Wow. I had that clone. I guess I kept that clone for the right moment. Just wait until he maybe would play out his air elemental or... Whatever. Now remember though, uh, we haven't seen each other's decks beforehand, so we don't know kind of what's in there. I guess in a way Plague Doctor knows because he's made them, uh, but I don't. So I, I don't know that he's got an Air Elemental, for example, uh, in his deck or, or a Sanger, but now I do, of course. Anyway, uh, this is game number one. Winning it here, feeling really, really lucky that Plague Doctor couldn't find the second black, for example, for the same year, then it would have been a completely different story. Uh, talking about different stories, we're going to shuffle up now and we're going to play game number two. Game number two, here we go. And in game two, we're actually showing our hands. So here we see my hand. Three lands, pretty good. Uh, I can play the Benelish Hero turn one. Don't have any black mana, I think, which is kind of unfortunate. And now Plague Doctor is going to show his hand. Just to clarify, while we were showing the hands, because this is for you guys, we were looking away, of course. So Plague Doctor, ooh, look at that. He's got the tie guy. He's got a Grizzly Bears. That's looking pretty good. That's looking, that's looking really good. Anyway, um, let's see who's on the play here. Okay, Plague Doctor starting with this Taiga. I mean, that's impressive when you're playing against, in this format, someone starts with a duel. You're like, what? That is impressive. Finding a Plains. What am I gonna do? There's my Benalish hero, of course. So there's the hero passing the turn. And what are we gonna see from Plague Doctor now? There's a Plains. Passing to turn. I believe I, re I remember we had a talk about, <laughs> about this. I'm going to wait for next turn to explain. Anyway, uh, attacking here with the Benalish Hero. Plague Doctor going to go to 19. Probably going to play out another land. I don't think I have another option in hand. There's an island. Remember, I had quite a lot of black cards in my hand, but no, um, no black mana, no swamps. Passing a turn here to Plague Doctor. Playing a Swamp himself. And now he's going to play out that Grizzly Bear that he had in his opening hand. And he said, oh man, I'm just not sharp. We were talking about something else. He forgot to cast it in turn two, so he's not doing it in turn three. That's kind of the vibe we were both in, actually. Uh, playing a Mountain here. I think, did I have a Dwarven Warriors in hand? I can't remember. Let's see what I can do here. I mean, I, I cannot attack. I've, I've got a 1-1 one, one Bander. It's going to be eaten by the bear if I attack. I guess I don't have the Dwarven Warriors. I think that was the last game. Anyway, passing the turn. There's a mountain. I mean, his mana base is looking really good again. Fire breathing. That is really nice. He can now swing in. He can pump it, make it a 3-2, put me on 17. Hmm, that's pretty problematic. A fire-breathing grizzly bear. That is not cool. It is cool, but I mean, not for me. And my life total. I need to find an answer. Attacking with the 1-1. No, un okay, attacking, not attacking? What do I want to do? I guess I want to attack here. Going to put him on 18. My second attack. Or does Plague Doctor have some kind of combat trick? Yeah, just taking the damage. He's going to drop to 18. Oh, finding a forest. I think I had a giant spider. 
That would be really good against the uh, the fire breathing grizzly bear. Yeah, there's the giant spider two four creature that can block creatures with flying. So it basically, it's the first creature with reach in Magic, which is very much flavorful, right? Because it's a giant spider with a giant web, and in a web you catch flying creatures. It makes sense. So one of the things that Plague Doctor could do now is attack and offer a trade with the giant spider. Looks like he's not going to do it though. He's going to play his Drudge Skeleton past the turn. Drudge, of course, a really good blocker next turn. He doesn't have any regeneration mana open at the moment. So also Plague Doctor kind of giving me an opening here. I could band and attack with the 3-4, three, 3-5 uh, three, then, of course, when I band it. But then on the crackback, could be problematic. Look at this, tapping 4. There's a Hill Giant, 3-3 three, three Vanilla. Actually pretty good because the 3-3 three, three can also kill the... Uh, the bear so kind of means i can attack her with a band without any real consequences so attacking or banding them together such so a three five now i don't think plague doctor is going to block this because i mean if he does he's going to lose the grizzly bear or the drudge and get nothing in return so why would he exactly taking the damage untapping he's on 15 i'm on 17 by the way let's see what he can do Tapping four. Ooh, disintegrates on the hill giant. That is painful. Now he can swing in for three. Ooh, not attacking with the drudge. That's kind of, I'm surprised because he doesn't have any regeneration mana anyway. I mean, are you going to really chump with it now? Interesting. I could also decide to attack separately here and offer him a trade with the Banalish. It's, it's tough though, because banning is a really good ability. Then again, regeneration. I think regeneration is maybe even better. So yeah, look at that. Offering him to trade. Just only attacking here with the Banalish. He's taking the damage. So dropping here to 14. And I still have my spider to block the Grizzly Bear next turn. I'm on 15, of course. I got to think about my life total. Oh, this is funny. Conversion. One of the uncommons in my, my uh, starter deck. So conversion is an enchantment. Two white and two to cast. It says all the mountains or now planes. Right? And I've got to pay two planes each upkeep to keep it around. So ba basically, we all don't have any mountains anymore, which is quite good for me because it means that Plague Doctor can no longer use his fire breathing. And um, we were talking a little bit about the uh, dual land because the dual land is a forest and a mountain. Uh, and to our knowledge is what, what happens here. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below because I've been wrong before. Is that the, the mountain turns into a plains, but it can also still tap for a forest because it's a basic forest and a basic mountain. So when he taps it, he can choose if he wants to make it a mountain, then a mountain is actually a plains or if he wants to make it a forest. So yeah, that's that's kind of kind of funny to have these uh, these situations. Anyway, let's see what uh, what else Plague Doctor is gonna do. So his flipped around lands, by the way, or or, the, or it's the dual land, and that's the mountain that's turned into a plains. And I've got my two mountains that are actually plains under my conversion, just to pay for the upkeep cost, and also to remind myself that this weird rule is uh, going on at the moment. So Plague Doctor, is there really a good attack for him? I mean, he could attack with the Drudge, just regenerate, but that's about it. So choosing not to attack makes sense. We both kind of have our walls up at the moment. Playing another land. I guess I'm just going to pass, though, because, I mean, I, if I attack, there's not really a good attack for me with that Drudge and uh, the untapped Swamp. So three cards in hand, passing to turn to Plague Doctor. Game number two here, I'm, uh, I'm on a one game win. So Plague Doctor needs to win this one. Tapping a Plains, which was formerly known as a Mountain. Oh, look at this, I like this. To put a Holy Strength on a Skeleton. Wow, so uh, Holy Strength gives plus one, plus two. So it's now a two, three with regeneration. It still doesn't do much, but it's better. 
you know, and it's really nice to kind of put your enchant creatures on a regeneration creature because you know the regeneration creature will probably be around a long time, especially in this format. There, there, there's no swords. We do play with disintegrates, both of us, Plague Doctor already having played his. So if we can draw into my disintegrate, that would be ideal. Then again, I would need to let the conversion die, by the way, to get mountains back. Oh, that, that is, it's so, this game is so funny. There we see Plague Doctor playing the, the mountain, turning it around again, flipping it because it's now planes. He's got a lot of planes. Passing the turn, so we're kind of in a stalemate uh, position here, situation. Plague Doctor 14, I'm on 15. We just have to wait. Okay, tapping something, untapping it again. Maybe I've got like a, a jump. I could give one of my creatures flying like the spider deal two damage, but I mean, that's kind of a waste of resources, right? There's a quick pass again and a quick pass. So both of us just passing turn. And I wonder what's in my hand. Maybe I've got a lot of red cards in hand and I'm, I'm, maybe I'm waiting for the, for the perfect moment to start letting my conversion go, which I guess is getting, if that's the case, I'm probably going to sack it next turn because I've got seven in hand now. Really don't want to start discarding. I mean, if I've got red cards, I've got some few really nice red cards, like an Earth Elemental. Look at this, exactly. So not going to pay for the upkeep. Conversion will be destroyed, and we're all going to get our normal lands back. So it is a bit risky, because maybe Plague Doctor has like a Fireball in hand. Who knows? But hey, I'm taking the risk. I want to play stuff. Seven cards in hand. Eight, I guess, after the draw. Looks like I'm going to tap some red. Ooh, I'm tapping quite a lot. What am I going to do here? Fireball. Wow, a huge fireball. And I guess I'm playing a fireball for two damage on two targets. Exactly, so six mana tapped. So I'm destroying the grizzly bear and the pegasus. And after that, of course, I could attack. Look at that fire breathing on the spider. Wow, there's a lot of fire breathing here in this match. And it's actually quite good. The problem here for me, though, is that um, that Plague Doctor has that regeneration creature. I need to find a way to get rid of that drudge. Passing the turn now back to Plague Doctor, who also, of course, has access again to his red mana. I mean, is he going to play a fireball on my creatures? I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like he's going to do something. Tapping three here, two red and a white. Ooh, Orcish Artillery. That's actually quite good. A one, three creature. You can tap it. It can do two damage to any target, but you take three damage yourself. But it's a great way, like in a blocking situation, he can attack with the Drudge. If I block on a giant spider, he can kill the spider. He can kill the, the, uh, the Benalish hero whenever he wants to. So... Yeah, this is, this is a really good card. This, this gives Plague Doctor a lot of options. I believe it's also an uncommon, by the way. Little nice side note is that the alpha printing uh, is only costing one red and one to cast. I mean, that's just insanely powerful. Tapping the blue. Okay, what am I going to do with the one blue? Oh, I did have to jump. Okay, so I'm giving flying to my spider. So I'm giving flying to my fire-breathing spider. Can you kind of make an image in your head what that looks like? And then pumping it up, dealing four points of damage here to Plague Doctor. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to put his life low also because of the orcish uh, artillery. So every time he uses the orc, it's really going to be painful for him, right? He's already on 10. So I want to make him think about it, that it's not like a freebie for him to use the orc. So that's why I'm getting kind of aggressive here. It is risky, though, because now, of course, Plague Doctor can attack. Oh, what is he going to do? Unholy strength! Oh, this is so bad. So it's, it's a 4-4, four, four, it's a 5-6, it's a, five, six, it's a Ma Moti Jin with regeneration that doesn't fly, but still, Ma Moti Jin stats, this is ridiculous. Oh, man, this is so bad. So remember, Unstable Mutation, when you put it on your enchant creature, it gets plus three, plus three, but every turn you put a minus one, minus one counter on it, so it slowly gets smaller. And yeah, I'm, I'm putting my Benelish in front of the bus. I kind of feel like I have to. I don't want to take, like, five points of damage. Oh, man. 
in a way, I'm happy that Plague Doctor decided not to kill the Manelish. Then again, he would drop to seven. I could attack him for four. Yeah, that would have been a really bad move. Yeah, this is this is the this is a good play by Plague Doctor. I guess he could have considered waiting, maybe one more turn with the unstable and see if I would have chumped. But probably then I would have taken the damage. Anyway, it's looking quite good for Plague Doctor here. Herloon Minotaur hitting the board as well. There are just way too many creatures here for. For my opponent here, Herloon, a 2-3 creature, two black, uh, sorry, two red and one to cast. And I mean, this is a huge problem for me, right? Because next turn, he's going to swing in with the Herloon, with the Drudge. And if I block the the Herloon, he's going to kill me or, or kill the, the spider with the artillery. If I block the, the Drudge, he's going to do exactly the same. Ooh, tapping everything here. Already played out my fireball, of course. Okay, playing out a stream of life instead. That's nice. That's some life. Okay, that's going to give me a little bit of time. I think maybe I should have attacked first, keeping the red open. Then again, he could have killed it with a Herloon blocking combination with the artillery. Yeah, so this makes sense what I've done. Anyway, going back up to 22. This is really a race here. The problem is I'm not racing because I can't really attack or block with the spider. It's, it's really difficult. I'm in a really tough spot. I guess if you're Plague Doctor, exactly, you just want to attack. Now remember, it did get a minus one, minus one. So it's no longer a five, six. It's now a four, five. He's also attacking with the Hurlo Minotaur, hoping that I'm going to block, of course, because then he can kill it with the artillery. I think it's just going to have to take the damage here, but that's tough. That's six points of damage. I mean, I'm on 22. I'm going to drop to 16. Exactly. Going to take the damage. Dropping here to 16. He's going to do even more. There's a merfolk. And it may seem insignificant, but it's another body on the board. You know, it's good. Oh, look at that. Dwarven Warriors is really good on this board. You can use the dwarf to make the Herloon unblockable. Keep attacking with it. Oh, man. It's looking really bad for me. The only thing I've got going for me is that I'm on a higher life total. I need like, I need like my pirate ship or my personal incarnation. I need like a big card. Playing the wreck here. Okay, so the wreck is going to deal a little bit of damage to Plague Doctor because he's got two cards in hand. Looks like I'm going to do something else. Oh, I play a... Uh, what's this card called again? Power Leak? Could it be a Power Leak? So what happens? A Power Leak is an enchant enchantment. Uh, you put it on the enchantment of the opponent, and the opponent has to pay two mana every upkeep. If he doesn't, he takes a damage for each unspent mana. So you can pay one mana, take one damage, or pay two, take zero damage, or not pay any mana and just take two damage. It's a very interesting card because it doesn't say if you don't pay the two, the enchantment is destroyed. No, it works with life. It's, 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 I think it's a pretty cool card. I, I, I think in combination with, for example, Winter Orb, the card could be quite annoying. Uh, it could be a sideboard card, maybe in some control strategies. Problem is you don't see a lot of enchantments. And when you see enchantments hitting the board in like regular old school, you probably just want to destroy them. You don't want to want to put a power leak on them. But it's really cool. It's, it's really beautiful art by Drew Tucker, by the way. So there's another minus one, minus one counter on uh, the creature there of Plague Doctor. So now it's a 3-4, I believe. Still good, though. I mean, it, that creature is doing a lot of damage. Plague Doctor now probably going to pay for that enchant enchantment. I mean, how often do you get to play an enchant enchantment? This is super cool. So he's going to pay for it. Keep it. Uh, don't take the damage. It's looking, it's looking bad for me, though. Like... I see no way through. Okay, he's taking a damage from the, the wreck, by the way. So he's going to nine. He's got three cards in hand now. So all he has to do is just don't play anything out. And I guess just attack, you know. Looks like he is going to do something, though. Tapping the mana. Three mana in total for a lure. Oh, man, that is good. It is a little bit unfortunate for Plague Doctor here that he couldn't find the lure before because then it would, would have been even better. It would have just killed the spider. Now, if he wants to kill the spider, he will have to also use his artillery. But the good thing here, though, is that he can attack with everything. And, you know, I have to block the creature with lure on it. So lure and enchant creature, 
two green and one that basically says all creatures that are able to do so have to block this creature. And he's not attacking it with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. That's quite interesting. I think I would have attacked with the Merfolk too. So I have to block the Drudge. So I'm pumping up my Spider. So it's now a 4-4, four, four, forcing Plague Doctor to regenerate if he wants to. And I guess he wants to. Why wouldn't he? And I'm taking damage from the rest of the creatures. Three points in total, dropping to 13. And yeah, he's now going to kill the Spider. That makes sense. It does mean three damage though for Plague Doctor. So the spider's gone, but he's going to drop to six. So, I mean, I'm not dead yet. I wonder what's in my hand. Maybe it's full of black cards. Remember my opening hand? I had a terror in my opening hand. I haven't been able to play it out the entire game. <sighs> Which is, I mean, is it frustrating? It's just part of this type of magic, I guess. I, 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 it's not frustrating because I know my opponent is, gonna go, is going through the same. Finding a, a Mons Goblin Raiders. I mean, that's just got to be food for the Drudge, but at least it's going to, you know, soak up a little bit of damage. Plague Doctor again taking a damage from uh, the Wreck. Dropping here to five. Let's see what he can do. I mean, I'm a 13. He's quite low with the five, so maybe I can kind of wiggle my way to victory. So uh, now what we see here is basically the, he took the counter off because what he did is he put three plus one plus one counters on it. And I remember we kind of talked about this, that the way the card actually works, it, it gets plus three plus three and then minus one minus one counter being put on every single upkeep. And can you imagine how good it would be if it would say put three plus one plus one counters on it and each upkeep taken plus one plus one counter off of the creature? I mean, that unstable mutation would be, it already sees a lot of play in old school, but it would see tons of play in old school. Anyway, the Drudge is now just a 2-3, but still a magnet for my Mons Goblin Raiders. So, I, I mean, I think if I'm Plague Doctor, I would just attack with everything, right? Because I have to block the Drudge, so then he'll deal 5 points of damage, and he'll put me on 8. There he goes, attacking here. Still being careful, though. I'm not complaining. It means less damage for me. Maybe he's afraid of some tricks from my side of the board. And now passing the turn back to me. So I'm on 11. He's on 5. Can I find something? Okay, there's a swamp. So now I can play the terror that I have in my hand. The question is, what do you want to play it on? I could play it on the Hurloon. I could play it on the uh, Artillery, which has been a pain in the ass. But right now, Artillery is not a problem because I don't have a creature he can target. Maybe I've got a creature in hand, though, that I want to play out, but I can't because of the Artillery. So Artillery would be a target here, depending on what I have in hand. Okay, playing a Paralyze first. What am I going to play a Paralyze on? Interesting. So yeah, playing it out, it seems. Playing it on the Hurloon. Okay, I just really want to stop the bleeding, right? Now remember, um, Plague Doctor's creature is going to go down to, I believe, a 1-2 now. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so 4 minus 1 minus 1 counter. So now it's a 1-2 because of the Holy Strength. So I could still hit for one. Untapped is Hurloon, by the way, it seems. Not quite sure if he tapped enough mana for that. Because I believe he paid the two for the power leak. Yeah, now he's got to pay the four. Yeah, I'm mentioning it now. Then he's got to pay the four for the Paralyze. Wow, that's a lot. He's just using all his mana to just untap everything and pay for the costs of the power leak. Attacking with everything here. Oh, not even with... The, I would just attack with the Drudge. I think it's still a 1-2 if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. Attack it with the Drudge as well. So he's going to deal 4 points of damage. I'm going to drop you to 7. I mean, I'm dying. I'm slowly dying, but I'm dying. And I'm actually not been able to do that much. I mean, Paralyze is okay-ish, but it's not a lifesaver. Now remember, I've got the Terror in hand still. He's on four. I get it. I'm so close. 
Probably going to play the Terror now. Yeah, play the Terror. Going to play the on the Artillery probably. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a good decision, you know. I mean, the other thing I could have done is is is, is maybe play... So now it's a 0-1 creature, by the way. Is maybe play Paralyze on the Artillery. Because Artillery, you got to, you know, you got to tap for the effect, which is kind of nice. And then play a Terror on the Hurloon. That could have been an option as well. Because now he can attack me with the Hurloon. For, he can attack me for 4 until to put me on 3. And I mean, he's got the mana to, to untap anyway, so... I think the drudge is now a zero one, right? With the five counters, minus one, minus one counters. I mean, he could just attack for four, put me on three, which would be a pretty good deal for him. Tapping four. Okay, he's going to do something. Oh, there's a Flash Fires. Ooh, that's some really nice personal incarnation protection that he's got there. Even if I top deck into that card now, I can no longer play it out. So Flash Fires destroys all the planes in play, including the ones on the side of Plague Doctor. He's got two planes. There's the attack now for three. No, for four. So I'm going to drop to three. Oh, man. I'm dead next turn, right? I need a blocker at least. Right? And remember, he can make his creatures unblockable with the Dwarven Warrior. So it's going to be tough. Okay, there's a clone. What am I going to clone then? I guess to Hurloon, just to have a big body to 2 3 can bump off the uh, to Hurloon. Problem, of course, is that uh, Plague Doctor can make it unblockable. So now the uh, the Drudge Skeleton disappears. It's finally dead. That is funny. Oh, yeah, and this is something that happened. Um, he still paid for the Power League. It took us a while to figure this out. It doesn't really have an effect on the game, though. I also, also my mistake is now I should take away the power leak from the battlefield, of course, put it in the graveyard because it was linked to the Holy Strength and the Holy Strength went to the graveyard when the Drudge Skeleton died. Anyway, he's making a creature unblockable here. Looks like it's the uh, Merfolk. Interesting though. So he's not, he's not doing the Hurloon. He wants to keep the Hurloon on blocking duty. I mean, I'm on two. Next turn, he can make the Hurloon unblockable win the game. This is a problem. I'm in the tank here. Tapping a red. Do I maybe have... I think I remember this. I think I had a lightning bolt from the top of the deck. Now, the problem here is... I can bolt Plague Doctor, put him on one, but then next turn he kills me. I can bolt the Hurloon Minotaur, right? Attack with my Hurloon, put him on two, but then he, he kills me next turn. I can bolt the Merfolk. Why would I bolt the Merfolk? So my conclusion was the only thing I can do to survive here exactly is bolt the Dwarven Warrior because the Dwarven Warrior can make the creature unblockable and that's what I don't want to happen. So I'm still in a bad spot because he can attack with both. Right? And I, I'm forced to block the Hurloon because I don't want to die. So I take a damage from the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident and go to one. Oh, yeah, here we see us discovering that we no longer have to pay for the Power Leak. <laughs> Putting it in the bin. But this, I mean, this has been a pretty intense battle here in game number two. I mean, Plague Doctor's on four. I'm on two. I feel like I've got one more turn. And remember, in these games, one more turn can make all the difference. I mean, it's singleton mode, it's top decking mode, it's luck mode. What if I find a pirate ship next, uh, next turn? That would be huge. Gonna tap four. Oh, flying carpet. That is so bad. So he's gonna put his Minotaur on the flying carpet. He's gonna win though. I do have a Shatter though, so I can destroy the carpet. But in response, Plague Doctor can put the Hurloon 
on the flying carpet and win with it. And maybe you're wondering, hey, but if the carpet is destroyed, isn't the creature on the carpet destroyed? That's the way it used to be, but under new modern rules, we're playing modern rules here that doesn't apply. I think maybe we should have played the cards like the way they're written on, you know, especially since we're doing this starter deck challenge. But here's the but, we didn't discuss that beforehand. So if you don't discuss these things beforehand, you assume you're following the um, you assume you're following the modern rules. So you know, fair is fair. So in this case, I just died to a flying Harlem Minotaur, which is a great way, honorable way to die. Um, but maybe it's worth to think about um, playing the cards the way they're written down in this specific format because it's so it's so old school, right? And that's also actually the way we we used to play back in '95 because you didn't have the internet to look everything up. You didn't have a judge. There, there just wasn't that much knowledge in your game store so you would just read the card over and over again and try to come to your own conclusion or have a little discussion with your your friend and decide how you were going to play a card you know that's the way we used to do things anyway uh playing doctor winning here in a thriller of a game two and it's one one so we're gonna go to game number three game number three so it's one one here we go this is my opening hand i mean land wise it's not great the rest is good though I saw an El Hajash. If we can find a second black, let's see what Plague Doctor is working with here. Oh, there's that flying carpet that gave him the victory earlier in game two. He's also missing some important mana, like he's got the Pegasus, but no planes. So we're both kind of in a rough spot. Seems fair. Starting with uh, a island here passing the turn. So, I mean, we can we can play out our lands and hopefully we can find the right colors. Also a pass here from Plague Doctor. There's a swamp, okay. And also a pass, so no really action, uh, early action from both of us. There's a mountain. Pass again. Who's gonna play something first? That's the question. Oh, just a pass by me. Missing a land drop here. So didn't find any lands after those two in my opening hand. There's a circle of protection red. That's kind of annoying. I mean, I don't have any red mana anyway, so I'm not going to play any red spells soon. Oh, wait, he cannot play it either. Oh, that's funny. He doesn't have planes. Took it back. Doesn't have planes, of course. Cannot play it out. That was wishful thinking. Playing out a second swamp. There's my El Hajash. Sweet El Hajash on the board. The rare from my booster. Sorry, from my starter deck. That is nice. It's a 1-1, one, one, and for every damage it takes, I gain a life. So as long as Plague Doctor doesn't play anything out, I can just attack and gain life. Let's hope he doesn't play anything out because it's just a 1-1. One -one, so it's quite easy to block. Passing the turn. Okay, this is brilliant. Attacking him here for one. So he's going to take a damage. I'm going to gain a life. This is good news. El Hajash, really a card that hardly sees any play in old school, which is kind of a shame. I think maybe if you play Mono Black, right? And you play with a bat moon, that would be kind of cool. Make him huge and just attack and gain life. Plague Doctor here tapping four. There's a flying carpet. Okay, we saw that in his opening hand. So he's not really finding anything else or at least no creatures that he can play out. He still needs the white for the Pegasus. There's the attack again. So I'm going to go up to 22. He's going to drop to 18 past the turn, I guess. Or can I do something else? I mean, I'm missing land drops here. I hope I don't have to discard. I have to discard here. Mount Goblin Raiders going into the graveyard. That's pretty tough. It's really interesting when you're playing this type of magic, you know, with these starter decks. It's a completely different game. I mean, now, I guess you would get kind of frustrated if you get mana screwed, but when you're playing... With these decks, you're kind of expecting it, and you don't really get... I mean, it's not fun, but you don't really get pissed off. Actually, the discarding of cards is also an interesting part of the game. Like, what cards are you going to discard? What cards do you want to keep in hand? Like, for, for example, this time, I chose to discard the Crumble because I haven't really seen any good artifacts from Plague Doctor, and also Crumble gives him life. So I don't want to give him life. So I've got... Seven in hand, I guess, right? 
I mean, so far so good. I mean, El Ajash is dealing damage. I'm gaining life. Uh, as long as Plague Doctor doesn't do anything, I'm on a road to victory. But that seems highly unlikely that he's just going to do nothing for 17 more turns. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would make this a really boring video as well. Ending of the video, I should say. So waiting right now, let's see if Plague Doctor can, can do anything. Maybe he's got to discard, need some time to, to make a decision. Discarding the Circle of Protection White. I mean, I do have that personal incarnation. Who knows? Maybe it'll pop up later in the game here. There's a white mana. Can I do something with it? Maybe a Banalish Hero for one. That would be nice. I guess not. Attacking again with the El Ajash. Going to 24. Plague Doctor taking another hit. It's going to 16. Passing the turn back here to Plague Doctor. Finding a mountain. I guess he needs planes and swamps. Or else he would have played something out. There's another planes though. Ooh, what if I can kind of, you know, find a third planes and draw into my, uh, into my 6-6, six -six, my personal incarnation. That would be insane. In the meanwhile, by the way, still attacking Plague Doctor. He's finally finding a planes so he can now cast his uh, Pegasus. 1-1 one, one flying banding. So that's something at least. Now he can block the El Ajash. I'm already on 25, by the way. That's pretty sweet. Five attacks with the El Ajash. If we could just find like Unholy Strength on there, that would be really good. Oh, Paralyzed tapping the Pegasus so I can attack him again. Oh, that's so funny. I'm just going to keep attacking with the El Ajash. That's my, that's, that's my strategy. That's the road I've chosen here for game number three here. And I'm doing quite well. I'm on 26. I wonder if he's going to untap. The thing is, that's what I like about old school magic. A lot of things happen in your upkeep. So you've got to make this decision now in your upkeep with the Paralyze if you want to pay four before you draw. I've noticed like in modern magic, they don't do a lot with upkeep anymore. And I mean, I really like upkeep. Like it's an extra layer in the game. You know, it makes you think you've got to make decisions before you draw. You've got to think about what possible things could I draw. What's my position on the board? And here we see Plague Doctor deciding to untap. Ooh, there's an unstable, making it a 4-4. I wonder, is he gonna... Oh, I'm gonna power sink this. Power sinking it away. Now he's got to tap his lands though, even though he's, he cannot counter the power sink, but that's the way power sink works. I am doubtful about this decision because Power Sync is a very valuable card and I've got a lot of lands. So maybe I shouldn't have done this because yes, yes, I'll take some damage from the Pegasus, but every time he attacks, he's going to untap it again with the Paralyzed. Now I'm offering him a trade here. Yeah, I think I understand the trade, but if I wanted to trade anyway, I shouldn't have played the Paralyzed earlier and... I'm not really happy here with my line of play, to be honest. Because it feels kind of bad because I'm losing two permanents and he's only losing one. Playing a hill giant here, second main. Plague Doctor playing a mountain. Tapping, what is he going to do? COP Red! Of course, he still had that in his hand from like way back in this game. This is annoying because he can prevent the damage from the hill giant. Finding a Dwarven Warriors... For himself. This is really annoying. I was so looking forward to start swinging in with my 3-3 three, three hill giant. Now he's got that circle thing. Gonna attack anyway. I'm angry. It's gonna prevent the damage. Whatever. There, escape zombies. 2-2 two, two, and it's black so he cannot protect it with the circle. So next turn I'm coming in for 2. If nothing changes. Let's see what he can do. If he just passes the turn, I can swing in for two. I mean, how many cards does he have in hand anyway? There are some cards in there, though. Ooh, he's counting his mana. That's risky. Does he have something good? He's tapping six. Oh, he's got a stream of life again. So he's going to gain some life. Which is relevant, because life is time, so he's going to gain some time, basically, to find his good cards in his deck. 
Gonna go back up to 20. Look at that. This is back on 20. So I guess he tapped seven then because he was on 14. Untapping everything here. What can I do? Attacking here with the Scave Zombies. Dealing two points of damage. He's gonna drop to 18. Tapping four. What am I gonna do? Okay, there's a clone. What am I gonna clone? I mean, one of the things I could do is clone the Scave Zombies because it's black and keep attacking. I could also clone the Dwarven Warriors. Because Dwarven Warriors is quite a good creature in this format. You know, it can make creatures unblockable, which is which is pretty big deal. Oh, look at this. Obsanius Golem. Wow. You don't see that card often. 4-6 Vanilla Artifact Creature. That's huge. And uh, it looks like I made my clone into a Dwarven Warrior, by the way. So that means that at least I can make my scave zombies unblockable and attack. But I mean, the problem here is that Obsanius Golem. That is a serious problem. So Plague Doctor on 16. I'm still pretty high up because of El Hajash earlier in the game. I'm on 27. I still think it was a bad decision to trade that El Hajash, to be honest. I mean, I could have made it unblockable now with the Dwarf, gain a life, deal the damage every turn. Maybe I can find a pump-up spell, you know, like a Fire Breathing or an Unholy Strength. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what happens next. Yeah, another Flash Fire. We saw that in Game 2 as well, so he's going to destroy my planes. Which is annoying, because I still hope to cast Personal Incarnation, but I guess I'm uh, fur further away from that uh, now. Look at that, giving Flying to the Golem, Flying over the Giant... Dealing four points of damage. So I'm on 23. I mean, I can take some damage, but at a certain point I need to find an answer. Remember, I discarded to crumble quite early in the game. Uh, of course, not realizing that I would have to face an Obsanius Golem later. I mean, if I still would have had the crumble, I couldn't even play it out though, because I don't have, have a forest, so. I do have a shatter in the deck, so if I can find a shatter. I cannot terror it because it's an artifact creature. So it's quite tough to kind of get rid of this uh, Obsanius Golem. Attack Plague Doctor for two again, by the way. He's on 14. Now it's his turn. Tapping three. Oh, there's a lure. This is so bad. He can attack and I'm going to lose. That, that lure is doing work. You know, we saw lure in game. Uh, was it game two as well? Did a lot of work. So what I'm going to do now, before blocks are declared, I'm actually going to use... My dwarf to make my 2-2 uh, zombie unblockable. So I only lose my hill giant. But I mean, this is a really bad scenario for me. I'm on 22. It's looking really dire. I can attack him back for 2, put him on 12. But I mean, I mean, he's hitting with twice the points every single turn. Just attacking with escape zombies. Remember, Plague Doctor still has that COP red. Passing the turn here. Probably just going to attack again. Going to swing in for four again. Four through the air this time. It's quite interesting. Doesn't want me to chump here. So I'm going to drop to 18. Now the question is, am I going to use my Dwarf to make my Scape Zombies unblockable? There's a star. Attacking with the 2-2, two -two, so offering to trade. He's taking the trade. Not sure if this is a good trade. I don't know. I mean, hopefully that star can give me some life as well. But I mean, this is a race that I, I cannot win, right? I need... He's on 12. I need 6 turns. He only needs... I'm on 18. No, I'm lower, right? I'm on okay, I'm on 14. So he needs four turns. This is really tough. I can attack him now, put him on 10. I'm really kind of praying to the top deck gods. Also attacking now with my dwarf. Looks like he's taking the damage though. 
Nope, he's not. I think he realizes it now, and he's protecting it with the COP red. So only taking two, going to drop to 10, but I'm going to drop to 10 also next turn, unless I can do something here. Discarding a grizzly bears. Yeah, this feels really, really, really bad, you know? Because everybody on the battlefield is one, especially since we're both like doing this kind of, you know, attack and um, we're trying to outpace each other. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Attacking again for four. So he's going to put me on 10. This is really bad. Attacking here with both. Also with the dwarf, because why not? Ooh, fire breathing. This is actually good and gaining a life. Like this is a really good moment here in the game because I'm gaining a life going to 11, which could be relevant. Not at the moment, but maybe later. And that fire breathing is so good because I can deal an extra point of damage. So he's now on eight. So I can put him to five next turn. It's going to put me to seven. Or is he not going to attack? That's another option. If he doesn't, though, I can use the Dwarven Warriors to make my Scape Zombies unblockable. But maybe he doesn't realize that at the moment. Maybe he's going to keep the Obzanus Golem untapped. Who knows? That would be a small miracle. He does. Okay, this is fantastic. So I can make my Zombie unblockable. I'm going to swing in. Three points of damage. Obviously, this trick only works once because now he knows. But hey, I'll take it. He's on five. Oh, this is really good. Drought Skeleton. The problem here, of course, is that flying carpet on the side of Plague Doctor. He can make it flying. He can attack. Then again, you know, does he? He's, he's in a difficult spot. If he attacks, he puts me on seven. Still needs two turns. You know, and on the crackback, he's going to take four damage. There's the attack. I'm smiling here. It's looking good for me. Untapping. I mean, he's on five, right? I I should have one more turn after this. If that's the case, I can kind of almost smell the victory. I can hit him here for four. Attacking with both. Putting him on one. Uh-oh, is he going to do something? Oh, healing soft. Oh, ho, ho, this is sweet for him. Bad for me, though. So he's going to gain three, go back up to eight. Then he's going to take the damage. Oh, this is bad. And I'm discarding a reconstruction there. Not quite. Oh, yeah, he changed it. Did he change the dice? It's a bit... Unclear to me what he did with the life total. He should be on four if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm missing something though. Ooh, there's an artillery. I can gain a life from the artillery, but this is really bad. Making it flying, attacking here. Putting me on three. Oh. At least I can go up to four because of the star, because of the, the orcish artillery that came into play. And I believe he should be on four here, if I'm not mistaken. And then I can make the zombie unblockable. I can deal three points of damage, put him on one. But that's not going to make it. And he can block the drudge. I think I'm going to lose this because of that artillery. Next turn, he can win it. So I got to win it this turn. I've got one last turn. This is the turn. So I can make it unblockable. Deal damage. Three points of damage. He's going to block the drudge on the artillery. There's no way out for me here. He's got four cards in hand. I mean, I'm really taking my time. I'm trying to, to find a way to still win this. I guess my hand's full with white and green cards. I wouldn't be surprised. There's not much I can do here. Pointing at my scave zombies. 
If I have one more mountain, I could make it into a four power creature and win. That's magic for you, though. Attacking here. Okay, so trying to get Plague Doctor to block it here to, I guess, in a way, kill it. Not even killing it, though. I mean, why then not? If this is the route I want to take, then why not just attack with, with you know, also the Drudge? This is kind of a strange move. I think it doesn't matter, though, because, like I said, if it would have made a blockable attack, you know, I could have dealt three points of damage. It wouldn't have helped. There is a... Oh, what's that called again? The glasses that makes the, the, the planes also be mountains. There's the attack flying over me, killing me here. Yeah, that's... Oh, I was so close. Look at that. That's why I didn't want to pay the red. I had a red elemental blast in hand, hoping that maybe he would play a blue spell. And I'm actually pointing out right now that earlier in the match, a few turns ago, I discarded my reconstruction. One of the things I could have done was keep the reconstruction in hand, play it out myself, counter it with the right elemental blast, gain a life. I would, would have been put on five. That would have given me exactly that extra turn I needed to win. And look at my hand here, by the way. So I've got white, I've got earth elemental, which is great, but I need two red for that. So I couldn't play it out. And I've got a lot of green. Look at the card at the top of my library. It was a fireball. Why does this always happen to me? Why, why, why? Anyway, um, all jokes aside, it was a lot of fun to play against you, Plague Doctor. Thank you for, uh, yeah, for, you know, sending the starter deck to me, playing this game. I'm looking forward to play a lot more games. Uh, you also sent me a second starter deck for my brother, so I'm also going to play with my brother. I, I actually love this format. I really like it. It's, um, it's different, you know. Like I said, you got to accept that sometimes you don't find the right lands because your mana base is just really, really bad. Um, so there is more coincidence in there, I guess. You know, more chance in there, I guess. But also, there are just a lot of complicated board states that you get because you're playing with cards and card combinations that you usually don't play with and your opponent is doing the same. So it's that makes it really interesting. And actually, in some moments in this game, it was kind of some high-tech magic. So I also wonder if I made the right decisions. But anyway, it was a lot of fun. That's the most important thing. And I'm looking forward to play against you again, play doctor in the very near future. For now, thank you, the watcher, the audience. Thank you there out there on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. Don't go yet. Do that first, please. And subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And then there's a last thing you can do. And that is become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. It probably is showing it right here on the screen. So please take a moment to check that out and, and uh, see how you can also support the channel financially. Talking about that, if you become a patron, your uh, name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?